welcome to the 23rd edition of Narek Smile Time News. These are the headlines on Monday, 28th July 2020. Landmark decision by Ministry of Shipping allows sign-off of foreign seafarers at Indian ports. Indian government pushes setting up of industries on real estate of major ports. The Nautical Institute recognizes Kochi port for significant number of successful crew changes. Carnival Cruise Line ships to call Indian ports to drop off thousands of Indian crew. New Seas Bio chapter promotes welfare schemes under the leadership of Abdul Ghani Sarang. And now the news in detail. The Government of India has released a standard operating protocol for repatriation of foreign seafarers from Indian ports during the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. A circular issued on the 17th of July by the Ministry of Home Affairs of India permits sign-off at the Indian ports of foreign seafarers working on all the vessels except on cruise vessels and allows these seafarers to leave the country on one-day Bharat or chartered flights. The circular further states that it has been decided to permit, as a special case, a grant of temporary stay for up to one month by the immigration officer concerned to such foreign seafarers who have expired Indian visas but hold a valid passport and a valid seaman identity document that is CDC. Masa CEO Captain Shiv Halbe welcomed this historic decision by the government of India. On the 17th of July, the persuasive powers of the Ministry of Shipping and the Director General of Shipping finally bore fruit and the Ministry of Home Affairs issued a circular permitting foreign nationals seafarers of foreign countries to be repatriated from India, Indian ports. This is a landmark event and has catapulted India into that League of Nations which do not pay just lip service to the role of the seafarer but actually act on it. So it was a case of less talk, more action. Over the past seven weeks, India has progressively moved from a total lockdown, as far as the seafarers are concerned, from a total lockdown to a progressive relaxation. First, they permitted relief of the Indian seafarers in Indian ports. Then they permitted ships to be diverted to Indian ports to re uh, for relief of crew members. Then they permitted RPS companies to charter flights to enable move their seafarers in and out of the country and thus effect reliefs overseas. And now they have permitted foreign seafarers to be repatriated from Indian ports uh, by using the charter flights or the Vande Bharat flights. Well done, sir. Well done. We look forward to such good news more and more. Expressing his views, Captain M. M. Sagi, former nautical advisor to the Government of India said, Marex, in its bi-weekly publication of 13th July 2020, had published an article authored by myself mentioning that crew change for Indian crew is already permitted in Indian ports and that the Indian government should now consider change of foreign crew as well in our ports. Such action would be in line with IMO advice to all member countries to support and facilitate repatriation of all seafarers as soon as possible and would for India result in more business opportunities for our ports and other vendors including airlines, suppliers and transport providers. The Directorate General of Shipping has been extremely prompt to respond. They have now permitted sign-off of foreign seafarers in Indian ports while their order of 17th July 2020. However, there is no clarity on the permission to allow the relieving foreign seafarers to fly into India to join ships, but we hope that this too will be facilitated soon. The second area of seafarer travel that needs to be reviewed is that almost all our seafarers are being carried from India to the Middle East airline hub Doha in Qatar and then carried onward to different destinations across the world on Qatar Airways and other airlines. What it really means is that all the business of Indian seafarer travel is being taken away by foreign airlines to the detriment of our own airlines. This can easily be reversed by suitable directions from the Home Ministry 
and some facilitation by civil aviation and the Ministry of Shipping. Such a move, if implemented rapidly, will result in savings in time and money related to repatriation cost of Indian seafarers while also allowing Indian airlines to avail this significant source of revenue. Portland development in India, the Indian shipping ministries will push for industries to be set up on a chunk of 1.1 lakh hectares of real estate available with India's 12 major ports. This was recently announced by the Union Shipping Minister of India, Mr. Mansuk Manviya. So far, this land was being utilized for earning rent. But now, plans are afoot to convert this massive land bank into special economic zones to bolster industrial production in the vicinity of the ports. The UK-based Nautical Institute recently awarded a Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. M. Bina, Chairperson of Cochin Port Trust, for the tremendous work of the port in carrying out crew changes of the Indian seafarers from ships calling Kochi for this express purpose. The ability of the Kochi port to carry out crew changes of over 5,000 seafarers from almost 300 ships since the lockdown in March without any incident till date, despite the onset of monsoon, is a great credit to all the stakeholders, including the tug operators who are carrying out operations in very difficult conditions. I am very proud to share with you the fact that Cochin port has completed 6,248 crew changes, over 320 vessels, over this very short period since the uh, advent of the COVID epidemic. In fact, this has been made possible because of the very robust SOPs which have been formulated by the DG Shipping, the Director General of Shipping India, in consultation with the Ministry of Home Affairs India. In fact, this has been made possible and the fact that there has been no incident, no untoward incident so far, in spite of the fact that we are in the thick of monsoon, it stands testimony to the skill and ability of our, the tug masters and the tug crew. In fact, we are happy to be part of this initiative because we know that this is the very least that we can do for the seafarers who are out at sea to ensure that the engine of trade remains running. Luxury Cruise Liner, owned by the Carnival Cruise Line, has never called at any Indian port as a part of their itinerary. Yet, four such massive floating hotels will visit the Mumbai port in the months of July and August, not to take on any passengers, but to drop off thousands of Indian crew stranded on board since February after coronavirus threw the normal life out of gear. In a statement issued to Marix, the Carnival Cruise Line spokesperson said, We have repatriated about 3,500 Indian crew from four CCL ships within a period of 10 days in June. All four ships called at Mumbai port and this operation was made possible due to the support of the Mumbai port authorities, the port customs and immigration, our port agents Inchcape and local transport vendors. Altogether in May June this year, Carnival Corporation has brought back to India more than 11,500 Indian crew working on board their cruise ships. They have used a combination of chartered flights, Vande Bharat flights, 
as well as cruise ships to achieve this major task successfully. I would like to take this opportunity to verify that recently Carnival Corporation safely repatriated over 3,500 Indian crew from four Carnival Cruise Line ships. And this all happened within a period of 10 days in June. Now all four ships called to the Mumbai uh, Port Cruise Terminal. And this operation was only made possible by the excellent and continuous collaboration support from the Mumbai Port Trust, the Port Customs, Immigration, the Health Authorities, the Port Agent, ourselves, Inchcape India, and CSSI, with the local supporting transport vendors. Now, Indian crew members form the second highest volume of crew in the cruise industry. And making it possible to re repatriate crew in this way makes it desirable to recruit Indian crew members in the future. So I would just like to thank all concerned. It's most appreciated. Located in the union territory of Dadranagar Haveli and Diu Taman, the picturesque island of Diu is connected to the state of Gujarat through a historic bridge overlooking the Arabian Sea. Under the leadership of NOSI General Secretary Mr. Abdul Ghani Saran, NOSI's Dio chapter currently serves over 7,000 seafarers residing in and around the tiny island. Marek spoke to NOSI Dio chapter head Mr. Himal Rajput, whose team relentlessly promotes various welfare schemes for the seafarers during the current corona pandemic phase. मेरा नाम हेमल राजपूत है और मैं नेशनल यूनियन ऑफ सीफेयर्स ऑफ इंडिया नुसी दीव ब्रांच का रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हूँ दीव में अराउंड 6,000 सीफेयर्स हैं जो रेटिंग पेटी ऑफिसर जो होम ट्रेड ऑफिसर और फॉरेन गोइंग वेसल पे काम करते हैं ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा यहाँ से फॉरेन गोइंग वेसल पे सीफेयर्स दीव से काम करते हैं उस दरमियान नेशनल यूनियन ऑफ सीफेयर्स ऑफ इंडिया के जनरल सेक्रेटरी कम ट्रेजरर श्री अब्दुल गनी वाइस सरंग ने दीव के सीफेयर्स के लिए स्पेशली राशन उनको मिलता रहे इसके लिए प्रयास किए इसमें रिटायर्ड सीमेन विदो और अनफिट सीफेयर्स को राशन प्रोवाइड किया गया जिसमें गेहूं, चावल, राइस, सुगर, टी आदि लोगों को दिए गए कोविड-19 के दरमियान। उसके अलावा जो सीफेरर्स यहां के मुंबई में फंसे हुए थे, उनको एक महीने तक का ब्रेकफास्ट, लंच और डिनर हमारे अब्दुल गनी सरंग साहब ने प्रोवाइड किया मुंबई में और वापस लाने के लिए उनको दीव में वापस लाने के लिए प्रयास किए। के थ्रू हमारे श्री अब्दुल गनी वाई सरंग सर ने रेटिंग और पेटी ऑफिसर जो रिटायर है और सीफेरस की विदो है और अनफिट सीमेन है उनके अकाउंट में डायरेक्टली 3000 रुपीस जमा करवाए है डायरेक्टली 3000 रुपीस उनके अकाउंट में जमा करवाए है और जो अनइंप्लॉयड सीफेरस है जो जो अभी जॉब पे नहीं गए हैं उनके अकाउंट में 5000 रुपीस नुसी कोरोना के दरमियान जमा करवाए अभी फिलहाल सीफेरर्स की फैमिली को हैंड सेनेटाइजर जो 6000 सीफेरर्स की फैमिली यहां पे है अवेलेबल है उनको हमारे श्री अब्दुल गनी वाई सरंग साहब के नेतृत्व में यहां पे दीव में से हैंड सेनेटाइजर जो 500 एमएल की बोतल है वो दी जा रही है बांटी जा रही है ताकि ये कोरोना के दरमियान उनको काम आ सके नुसी की तरफ से दूसरे बेनिफिट भी दीव के लोगों को दिए जा रहे हैं जिसमें कि मेडिकल क्लेम है स्पेशली सीफेरर्स उसकी फैमिली और उसके बच्चों के लिए है जो मेडिकल असिस्टेंट यहां से दिया जा रहा है वो अभी भी चल रहा है एजुकेशन में स्कॉलरशिप दी जा रही है एजुकेशन ग्रांट और अगर हायर स्टडी के लिए बच्चा पढ़ने जा रहा है इंजीनियरिंग कर रहा है तो उसको पर ईयर 30000 अगर मेडिकल कर रहा है तो उसको 45000 अगर एब्रोड जा रहा है तो उसको स्कॉलरशिप मिल रही है 2 लाख से 2 लाख रुपए और सीफेरस का बच्चा 
अगर जीपी रेटिंग की ट्रेनिंग करता है किसी भी इंस्टीट्यूट से तो उसको फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज नुसी की तरफ से मिलते हैं स्कॉलरशिप के रूप में ये बड़ी बात है हमारे श्री अब्दुल गनी भाई सरंग सर ने डीव में स्पेशली बहुत सी एक्टिविटीज शुरू करवाई है उसमें सॉफ्ट स्किल एनहांसमेंट के लिए फ्री नुसी कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग क्लासेस चल रहे हैं सी फेरर्स और उसकी फैमिली के लिए फ्री स्पोकन इंग्लिश क्लासेस चल रहे हैं सी फेरर्स और उसकी फैमिली के लिए सेविंग मशीन क्लासेस वुमन एम्पावरमेंट अगर सी फेरस और उसकी फैमिली के लिए उसको सिलाई मशीन का काम यहाँ पे सिखाई जा रहा है कम से कम हंड्रेड से भी ज़्यादा बहनों ने इसका फ़ायदा उठाया है और यहाँ पे एक नुसी नर्सरी इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल है उस उसमें सी फेरस के बच्चे पढ़ते हैं वो दो टू से यहाँ पे कार्यरत है और यहाँ पे निर्मला माता हाई स्कूल दीव स्कूल में 15 लाख रुपीस का डोनेशन दिया है एट रूम कंस्ट्रक्शन के लिए और कंप्यूटर क्लास के लिए जो 2010 में दिया गया जहाँ ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा सीफेरर्स के बच्चे पढ़ते हैं उसमें ये सब चीज़ें यहाँ पे नुसी की तरफ से हो रही है अब्दुल गनी वाइस सरंग के नेतृत्व में डीव में बहुत से सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सोशल एक्टिविटीज़ हो रही है जैसे स्वच्छ भारत अभियान नुसी स्वास्थ्य फिर बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ अभियान जैसे नुसी संकल्प नुसी सदाबहार ट्री प्लांटेशन पेड़ लगाओ पानी बचाओ और नुसी संकल्प प्लास्टिक हटाओ पर्यावरण बचाओ से नो टू प्लास्टिक जैसे अभियान यहाँ पे चलाए जाते हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच Meanwhile, India's national carrier Air India has dropped cheers to the ship manning companies. The airline will operate 180 flights between India and USA under the One Day Bharat mission in the months of July and August. Flights will operate to and from New York, San Francisco, and Washington DC, and will offer connections to Hyderabad, Chennai, Bengaluru, Kochi, Mumbai, and Ahmedabad. The shipping ministry has named former DG Shipping Ms. Falini Shankar, a retired Indian Administrative Service Officer of Maharashtra Cadre, as the Vice Chancellor of Chennai-based Indian Maritime University. Ms. Shankar will serve the university for a term of five years, or until she attains the age of seventy years, whichever is earlier. In a statement to Marix Media, Mrs. Malini Shankar said, "I am honoured by the appointment and the recognition." and i pray that i can live up to the expectations recently and lewiston hindavan group held its second out of the three planned seafarers in times of pandemic webinar for off duty senior officers as a part of its new info sharing initiative regarding crew changes and other related matters attracting a sizable turnout of over 200 participants on july 21 indian maritime unions mui and nusi will jointly hold a webinar on the topic indian sea carriers crew change success or failure apart from mus mr amar singh thakur and nosis mr abdul ghani sarai many eminent maritime personalities including itfs mr stephen cotton masa chairman captain prashant ragnekar deputy dg captain daniel joseph will participate in this webinar scheduled tomorrow 21st july At World Skill Youth Day event held recently, India's Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi spoke about the importance of merchant navy and the seafarers. Please watch this video, which has gone viral in the social media. Merchant navy का उदाहरण ले, तो भारत समय पूरी दुनिया को sailors की बहुत जरूरत है. हमारी तो साढे सात हजार किलोमीटर से लंबी कोस्टलाइन है. बड़ी संख्या में हमारा युवत समुद्र और तटीय परिस्थितियों से परिचित है अगर इस क्षेत्र में स्किल को बढ़ाने पर काम किया जाए तो दुनिया भर को हम लाखों एक्सपर्ट सेलर्स दे सकते हैं और अपने देश की कोस्टल इकोनॉमी को भी मजबूत कर सकते हैं मैरिटाइम सीईओ 
with the support of the Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Mumbai is conducting research to understand the linkages between gender diversity and performance. Marek spoke to CEO's Ms. Sanjam Gupta. The Netherlands Consulate in Mumbai, along with Maritime CEO, is conducting research to understand the business case for diversity within the maritime industry. Do you have any best practices to share with us? Support us by taking this 15-minute survey. Being a news anchor is a tough job. The audience certainly knows that the anchor reads a news bulletin from a tailored news clip, which is flashed on a computer or a teleprompter placed in front of the anchor in the studio. However, reading every sentence correctly in a proper diction and with proper pronunciation often throws up countless challenges, while an anchor shoots a bulletin within a stipulated time to meet an editorial deadline. Marek's camera person secretly recorded a few funny moments while shooting our Monday bulletins. Here, let's take a look at it. <laughs> Agents providing crew change services were seen charging as much as 100,000 USD dollars I, uh, why did I say USD dollars? It's just the dollars. <laughs> MTG conducts first course of trading. Sorry. <laughs> A webinar on the much debated merchant shipping bill. <laughs> and now the news in detail. 25th of June was 9. <laughs> the Directorate General of Ship Shipping. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> From luxury items to raw materials, everything is carried by the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Director General of Shipping, Mr. Amitabh Kumar, has said that. Going forward, Mirai Mouse Nature. Chan. The company of Master Mariners of India, CMMI, recently held its monthly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this bulletin. See you on next Monday.